Steelers outside linebacker Jason Worlds was paid $9.75 million as part of his transition tag contract heading into the 2014 season. Has he come close to earning that yet? We're going to find out here on Steelers Film Room with Behind the Steel Curtain. Jason Worlds was thought to be one of the top targets of the 2014 free agency period in the NFL. The Washington Redskins and Philadelphia Eagles were linked with conversations about the possibility of signing Worlds, who had just played through his rookie contract in Pittsburgh. The Steelers kept him with the transition tag, and without much of a future ahead of him as far as a contract goes, Worlds is going to have to have a big 2014 season if he looks to capitalize on the free agency market next year. Whether that'll be an extension with the Steelers or a, a contract with another team, he has a lot to make up for, and after the second half of his 2013 season, expectations for him were high. To this point, through four games, he only has one sack, not a whole lot of hurries or hits on the quarterback, and while he's played some pretty decent run defense, he's had a problem staying consistent through four quarters. We're going to break him down here on Steelers Film Room. The first play we're going to look at here in breaking Jason Worlds down is uh, under two minutes to go in week one against the Cleveland Browns. The Browns at this point had been driving pretty consistently on the Steelers in the second half and had roared back from a significant deficit in that first half to come within striking distance at the end. They had the ball here deep in their own territory, but it, in plays like this, situations like this, the guys who get paid the most money are the ones that you know, any fan or team is going to expect will come up with the big play. Now, this is an example of Cam Hayward making the big play, but watch Jason Worlds on this. Um, he's, he's at his standard left outside linebacker position. As he comes off the ball, watch how straight up he's standing and watch how slow he is to react. Now, to, to one uh, point of view, it could be that he's waiting for the tight end to make a move because he's got coverage responsibility of him. But either way, the biggest thing is the biggest mismatch in the NFL should be a pass rushing outside linebacker in a 3-4 defense versus a pass catching tight end. In reality, he should be absolutely whipping him regardless whether he's going out and covered or going out in a pattern or not. Worlds doesn't do that. He delays for a second and gets stoned basically on, on his way back to the quarterback. Fortunately for the Steelers, Hayward breaks in and makes the play, but the reality is Worlds does next to nothing on this play, and you have to wonder if fatigue isn't something of an issue. He has, it seems that he has this issue in the fourth quarter late in games, and while it's understandable the Steelers' defense may have been tired at this situation, it's something that he's going to have to figure out and, and or the Steelers are going to have to find a way to get him enough rest so he's fresh in the fourth quarter because he was dead in this one, and this play is a great example of it. The second play is against Baltimore in week two, and it's in the fourth quarter. Again, Jason Worlds looks to be kind of fatigued. I mean, Baltimore is well in control of this game at this point, and the Steelers' defense has been on the field quite a bit in the second half. But it, with the amount of time that's left in the game, and again, the fact that he's facing a pass-catching tight end in Owen Daniels, he really should be beating him like a rag doll, and he's not able to do that. As, as you can see, they're going to run right at him. I think that Baltimore is noticing that Worlds is fatigued at this point, and they're going to exploit it. Right off the snap, you're going to see Worlds stand up, and as as Daniels comes to get inside of him, Worlds kind of sidesteps him. In one way, I mean, it, it's not so much of a, a technique issue. He's looking to seal off the edge and to funnel the running back back inside, but look how far he gets pushed back. He's not competitive at all. He was late getting into Daniels, and this really is a matchup that he should be able to control physically. In this game against the run, Worlds actually didn't do too badly early in the game, which is more indication in my mind that he's wearing out toward the end of games and he's got an issue with his stamina early in the season. Hope isn't lost for the Steelers' big money outside linebacker. As you can see here in week three against Carolina, early in the game when he does have energy, he's got a lot of explosive ability. You watch this play with uh, 451 in the first quarter left against Carolina. Carolina's going to load up their heavies right off to the right, looking to, to run a stretch right at Jason Worlds. Worlds is going to explode off the snap and fully engage the fullback. And in doing that, the fullback's a pretty strong guy. As you can see, Worlds kind of bounces off him a little bit, but he re-engages. He gets back into him, and he really doesn't lose the, the two and a half yards that he got on the snap. And in doing that, he doesn't give the running back an angle to get up the field. He has to run a lot more flat and a lot more uh, toward the sideline. And in doing that, it gives Steve McClendon an opportunity to chase him down and make the play. This kind of explosion, this kind of strength off the edge is really what the Steelers expected from him based on his performance in 2013 
and with the size of the contract that they gave him. If Worlds is going to score a big extension either this offseason or anytime in the future, he's going to have to make more plays like this, and he's going to have to do it throughout all four quarters and not just in the first and the second when he has a little bit more energy. Maybe it's not a fatigue issue. Maybe it's just something more with technique. But either way, you can expect Jason Worlds to improve quite a bit as the season goes along. He's a talented player. He's just not showing it throughout all four quarters, very much like this young and improving Steelers defense. They've got a way to go yet, and Worlds is going to have to spearhead that effort if he looks to cash in big and the Steelers look to improve on a, a defense that hasn't played particularly well through the first quarter of the season. With Steelers Film Room and Behind the Steel Curtain, I'm Neil Kulong. 